you don't get music like this anymore, do you? You're probably shocked and horrified that I have never heard this song before. I've of course heard Africa, it's very famous, but I do know that this song has a very important and funky groove. Stop it here because I want to go talk about that groove that's there at the start. This is known as the Rosanna Shuffle. And what is a shuffle? It's a groove that is based around triplets. This is a shuffle that's combined with a backbeat. It was designed, I suppose, by Jeff Porcaro, who was the drummer of Toto. And it's derived from a combination of a couple of his favorite drummers' signature drum beats. So you've got a little bit of the Bernard Purdy shuffle, which sounds like this. And a little bit of John Bonham's shuffle, and John Bonham was in Led Zeppelin from Fool in the Rain. So let's just go back and listen to that because it's so funky and so joyous. <laughs> okay, vocal coach, vocal coach, not drums. Okay, so this was originally Steve Luthica and Bobby Kimball who was originally in the band, but once he left, they took on Joseph Williams. Joseph Williams, now isn't that surname a usual surname? Who could he be the son of? John Williams, of course. So he is musical royalty. He has sung on many, many movies and just has a fantastic voice and is here singing with Toto. I love these harmonies, so tight. Oh, you don't get music like this anymore, do you? That high harmony from Joseph. Oh! Lukather has a really interesting tone and he does something which I would normally guard against. In fact, quite a lot of singers do this. He uses a lot of nasality and that means it really cuts through. So it's through his nose and yet he has a little bit of a lower larynx. So it both is warm and cuts through at the same time. And when you hear him with Joseph in a second, you're gonna hear that Joseph also has that cutting tone, but actually it's more twang. Twang means that it isn't coming through the nose. And the way that you can find that out is if you do like a, hey, now if you make it go through your nose and it goes and it kind of cuts out as you touch your nose. But if you try and make that tone, hey, and make it come out of your mouth, hey, and raise your soft palate at the back, 
then that is going to not come through your nose and it's twang that's making that really punchy sound. And it's the twang that's allowing him to get up to that high note. Nasality can, for a lot of people, causes problems when they're trying to get up to that high note, often causes people to push or to lose a little bit of that resonance. For some people it really works. So play around with that and see what version works for you. Do you want twang or do you want nasality for your high notes? Or do you want neither? Woo! See how it's smoother? What a voice! <laughs> this is such a good track. Actually, that's kind of interesting. The vibrato was really in time and, and I'm not sure if they thought of that, although I feel like they probably did. But actually, I think one of them held on a bit longer than the other one. But the harmonies are so, so tight and the vibrato is just wobbling perfectly at the same time. They decided to put the vibrato the whole way through. It's so tight how they're using those rhythms. Do, do, do all the way and how they're accenting different points, how they're making staccato on different points. It, it's just good music, isn't it? Like I've always said, I don't think that there's much music that's like this. It's so rich, so musically rich, so groove rich. I love all the changes in groove. I love the harmonies. I love the vocals. Those high vocals, that high harmony gets me every time. I'm gonna go back and listen to that actually. Wow, high harmony, listen. Ah. It showed him not singing it. Maybe it's not him. Maybe it's trapped. Oh, I said so low. Oh my god, so much joy. Wasn't that beautiful? This track was actually very state of the art. I'm not sure what they're using in this performance because of course technology has moved on and they might be using some of the sounds and put them onto a newer form of keyboard. But it originally used a micro composer which was produced in 1977 and was considered revolutionary at the time. It cost almost $5,000 and due to the high price, there was only 200 units sold worldwide. And one of them was on the original recording of this song. There was also a mini Moog and Moog synthesizers were a real big thing but this was one of the more affordable ones. It was the first synthesizer sold in retail stores and that was also on this track. <laughs> yeah that's not the original that he's playing. Love this transition into this really even beat after the group. Yeah, who is 
Dance at High Harmony. So there's a little growl there on the no, 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 yeah, and he's using a little bit of his false chords. These are a protective mechanism, a little bit of tissue that comes across your vocal cords. It comes across when you're coughing and stops high pressure damaging your vocal cords. But also with a bit of training, we have the ability to move them across and they get in the way of the airflow and vibrate in an uneven way. And you hear he's getting this kind of Louis Armstrong style growl here. A little bit, it's his next one. Na, 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 na. That sound. Oh. I love that brass stab as well. Goose pimples everywhere. Oh my goodness. This is a man who wanted to become a session musician and he met the Picaro brothers and they already were. I think Steve Picaro, if I'm right, was working for Steely Dam. And actually they said, you know what? You're great. Do you want to form a band? This is the band and you could tell. This is session musician quality. Every single person is at the top of their game in their individual instruments. And often you hear a solo artist you know, it's hard as a soul artist, you're not an expert in drums, but here you've got an expert in every single part of the music and it just slots together in harmony. Excuse the pun. But Steve did indeed fulfill his dream to be a session musician and has played on over 1,500 albums throughout his career. What? I don't know when he would possibly have the time to do that. It's incredible. <laughs>
Outro! Gospel style outro! Go, go, go! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't often say this. I think I found my favorite song. I love this. I really, really love this. Before you go, I have just released my very own album. Some of the songs are available here on YouTube and on Spotify, and you can find my whole album on my website, bethrose.com. But for the meantime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.